In most of what we do, the most important feature of solving a max-min problem is going to be the classification of critical points. We can use the first derivative to find them, but classifying them. Do we have a max? Do we have a min? Do we have something weirder than that? That is going to be the subtle point. In order to do that, there's a number of different approaches. You may recall the first derivative test from your initial intro to calculus, but we're going to focus on the second derivative test. And not just what it is, but why it is, why it works, and what to do when it doesn't work. And our approach, of course, is going to be to think in terms of Taylor expansion. Let's assume that our function f has a critical point at a and is sufficiently differentiable to be able to talk about its Taylor expansion. Then, if we consider what happens near that critical point, if we change the input by an amount h, then we have that f of a plus h equals f of a plus the derivative of f evaluated at a times h plus... Let's keep going with the second order term. 1 over 2 factorial, the second derivative of f evaluated at a times h squared. And then we've got a bunch of other stuff. Let's pop that into a big O of h cubed trash can. Now, let's think. We have a critical point. That means the first derivative vanishes. That term is gone. If we ignore all of the higher order terms, all the terms that are cubic and above, then what do we have? We have a function that looks like a constant plus some other constant times h squared. That is parabolic. That is the formula for a parabola. And what controls whether that parabola opens up or opens down is the coefficient in front of the second order term. What is that coefficient? Ah, it's the second derivative. Now notice, you have that 1 over 2 factorial out in front. But we don't really care about that because it's a positive number. Positive second derivative, it opens up. If you're in that case, that means you have a local minimum. If that second derivative is negative, then the parabola opens downwards. That implies that the critical point is a local maximum. Gee, how are we going to remember those two criteria? Positive, minimum, negative, maximum? Hmm. The point is that Taylor expansion makes all of this clear. And if this was something that you just memorized in the past, now you don't need to just memorize this as some random test. It is fully sensible and comes straight from a Taylor expansion. Let's see this in the context of an example. Let's find and classify the extrema of a simple polynomial function. Let's say f of x equals x to the fourth minus 8x squared minus 5. Now, this being a polynomial is fully differentiable, really easy to work with. If we compute the first derivative, we get clearly 4x cubed minus 16x. Let's factor this as 4x times quantity x plus 2 times quantity x minus 2. Now, if we set this first derivative equal to 0, it is clear that there are exactly three critical points. And these critical points, these critical inputs are at x equals 0, x equals negative 2, and x equals positive 2. To use the second derivative test, we need, of course, the second derivative. That is easily computed as 12x squared minus 16. So, if we evaluate the second derivative at x equals 0, we get a negative number. That means we have a local maximum. Evaluating at x equals negative 2 gives us a positive second derivative. That's a local minimum. The exact same computation holds for x equals positive 2. And all of this checks out when we actually graph the function. We can see where the critical points are. We can see where the critical values are. And we can see that the approximations to the function at the critical points gives you these parabolae that open up or down depending on the sign of the second derivative.
That's the second derivative test, and that's why the second derivative test works.